Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London and this morning I'm reviewing a book which has come to us from Informa and Routledge, it's a Taylor and Francis uh, group um, publication. The title is Bills of Lading, now in a second edition. It's a technical area of law in terms of international trade. It's what I um, covered with my bar exams. Fairly familiar with the subject matter. Um, this particular book is excellent because it's part of the very specialist Lloyd's uh, Shipping Law Library uh, of publications, which we'll have a look at in a minute. The book is, as I say, a second edition of the work, and it's an important substantive work on the statement of law. Uh, it's been written by Richard Aitkins, Richard Lord and Michael Bulls. Now, Elizabeth and I talked about the review. She's written um, a fairly substantial review, which uh, we've discussed, and I'm doing the presentation. The review will be in the journals and on the web. And the title of our review of this book is Are Bills of Lading Like Elephants? This established title from Lloyd's Shipping Library explains all, now in a new second edition. Now I'll explain more in a minute. This is the book, it's, a paper. it's not a paperback, it's a hardback and an e-book, there it is there. That's the front cover, then there's the spine, there's nothing on the back. And as you see it's the Lloyd's <coughs> Shipping Law Library. The book runs to um, 550 odd pages. There is the back of the index there and it's paragraph numbering for the index. So if you're looking for something in particular, it's a detailed index you will find the paragraph numbering of some help. Now there are schedules at the back and legislation at the back of the book to be oh, well, not a surprise really at all. Uh, now the front of the book, that's the actual front page. Then this is actually the shipping, the Lloyd Shipping Law Library. You can see it's well covered there. A lot of publications, some of which we've reviewed. There's another part of the front. And then there's the all the detail concerning the um, information about the ebook, ISBNs and so on. Then there's the preface. Do read the preface. It's always important to get some idea of what has happened uh, since the last edition. And the law is actually at the 31st of July 2015. Now, the uh, detailed contents are set out there. You should be able to find what you're looking for very quickly. There's a lot of information covered, as you can see by the various chapters as we run through them. And then after chapter 14, which is the last chapter, <coughs> you've got a series <coughs> of uh, appendices, starting off with the Hague Rules, then some um, Acts of Parliament and so on, then the index at the back. Then some acknowledgements, and then the table of cases. A lot of cases, as usual, <coughs> excuse me, uh, running all the way through with the cases. Then there's some, uh, after the cases, there are some statutes which uh, are there, and then statutory instruments, very few statutory instruments. And after that, you've got the conventions and rules, which again are very important, of course, in this area. Then what is creeping in in many of these publications today is European legislation. Now it starts off, it's always very interesting, I think, to start with a bit of history. So a short history of the Bill of Lading. Origins. For the purposes of our consideration, it is safe to say that in the 11th century, the Bill of Lading was unknown. So that's where we start off. So you can see we've got a long way to go. There's the footnoting at the bottom, which you can see, and you can see the paragraph numbering, which is where you will find what you're looking for if you use the index. Then after that, we go into the issues of Bill of Lading and so forth. Then the main meat of the, the publication. And then at the back, I've got remedies, which is always a very important area, of course. And then you've got right at the back uh, certain aspects of the Hague rules and the various appendices right at the back. So there it is. Uh, another first-class book is where the law is to be found, without any question of doubt. So what do we say about it? We talked about elephants in rooms a few minutes ago, so what does that all mean? Well, we'll find out. This is what we say anyway. Why is a bill of lading like an elephant? If you're a shipping lawyer, you should read this book and find out. Far from the straightforward and routine documents they're assumed to be, bills of lading can be fraught 
with legal complications, with many a legal pitfall in store for the legally complacent or unaware. And so the new edition of Bills of Lading from uh, the Lloyd Shipping Law Library in Routledge and Law and Informer is that it's the first since the original edition came out in 2006. So there's been a, a basically a nine year gap effectively. And it's going to be welcomed, no doubt, by fleets of shipping lawyers. Accessible and easy to read, we think the book presents a minutely analytical and exhaustive study of just about every conceivable aspect pertaining to bills of lading, steering the reading through a reader through all the characteristic and distinctive features of bills of lading, as well as their inherent and potential contradictions. And I do think it is important. I didn't have this book uh, when I did my examinations many years ago, and I would have really found it helpful <clears throat> to have had something like this for my studies. However, uh, we do have it now, and that's the important thing. But what exactly, then, is a bill of lading? Because probably people have no idea at all. Let me explain. In Chapter 2, the three expert authors I've mentioned, Richard Aitkins, Richard Lord and Michael Bulls, um, concede that it is something like an elephant. That's a bill of lading, not them. Um, generally easier to recognise than define. Uh, we've heard this before, I think, in the legal profession, but there we go, that's their definition. One may take this to mean, then, that you know one when you see one, but it's hellishly difficult to describe, and that probably is where we are with quite a few the doctrines, more of the esoteric areas of legal jurisprudence, but there we go, that's the way it is. Nevertheless, this chapter in particular tackles the task of arriving at a satisfactory definition of bills of lading classifying these documents, and their documents specifically, into different species of bill. Bill, of course, being the generic term for the document. The challenge here is to determine whether a document is really a bill of lading or not. And that's really the basic starting off point. If you think about the concepts of the law of contract, that's actually where you start. Is it or isn't it a contract? Does it have a significance? I do get that in cases with documentary evidence being of prime importance in contentious litigation. So you can see how important that is. Certain distinctions are legally significant, uh, say the authors, as they affect the legal rights and legal obligations attached to the bill. Now this work is, as I say, published by Informer and Routledge. It's got over 600 pages effectively in length. And it's one of the latest titles to join the Lloyd's uh, Shipping Law Library, which is expanding an extremely, very, very comprehensive statement of the law in, in terms of marine law, in its general sense, if I can put it that way. And the book reflects any number of developments that have emerged in this area of law over the <clears throat> nine, almost ten years that have passed. That's since the initial uh, edition. The authors point out, however, that in this interval there's been limited drama on the substantive front. Lovely phrase, that. With the greatest changes occurring not on substantive issues, but in ancillary and procedural ones, which the authors have dealt with, mainly in a rewritten chapter 14. And the sections on uh, such issues as seaworthiness, very important of course, and the question of frustration of contract, fundamental of the elements of the law of contract, uh, of carriage, have also been expanded. And in response to the movement and direction of global trade, uh, reference is made to significant decisions from uh, various other jurisdictions, namely Singapore, Hong Kong, Australia, New Zealand and Canada. Singapore, of course, being uh, really quite important uh, in terms of the way the jurisdiction expansion has taken place in that part of the world. The book also contains brief but apposite comments on the influence of new technologies, including web portals for booking cargo. And I'm going to say here, just to, to expand that, that this is the direction we're going in, whether we like it or not. And so I think we're going to see a lot of changes taking place. And of course, the authors do stress a little bit um, of, of the need to notice the change because they're of the opinion that, quote, theoretically... Difficult questions may arise as to which click of whose mouse results in a binding contract, but such issues are unlikely to be of much practical significance. That is probably true, 
But of course we are in a very different era, even from the era 40 years or so, or nearly 50 years ago now, when I actually started uh, reading law. So you get some idea from the late 60s and early 70s of what the law of contract was like then, when we didn't actually have computers and clicks and mouses and <laughs> mice, rather, and all this sort of thing. The whole problem is that everything has changed and quite, changed quite dramatically, although the basic principles of a contractual obligation and an agreement are still there, in my view, and certainly the book covers that. The authors do comment in the preface, however, on, on this matter, that e-commerce does not resolve the legal issues associated with bills of lading, but it may resolve many of the practical and factual ones, and might be thought to augur an overall reduction in the level of disputes. And I would think that's very much the view of the Ministry of Justice in a much wider context with the reshaping of civil uh, justice um, because of the nature of how important IT, computers, all of this the new technology is for the way we do our business. And the law will therefore accommodate these changes, and I think that's what's happening at the moment. So when the new edition comes, the next one in another uh, probably a long time from now, you, know, you will, I think, see um, quite a lot more looking specifically at um, the use of artificial intelligence, which is very much, I think, coming to the fore now um, with what we do in the legal profession. Let me conclude by saying that uh, who's this book aimed at? Well, international lawyers, especially those advising on uh, marine law, or indeed any professional concerned with minimising the elephantine potential for risk and error inherent in bills of lading should make sure they buy this book now and they'll need it if, if it's their part of their overall um, work in terms of their uh, what their particular um, legal expertise is and it also is of course available as I said as an e-book and the publication is dated the publication is dated at 2016 but the law is as stated in fact, a little bit earlier than that, which is the middle of 2015, according to... We have endeavoured to state the law as it was on the 31st of July 2015, with the publication date being 2016. I'm very pleased with this book. It's um, There's the standard index. It starts off right away with Act of God, which is quite an interesting starting off point. Schedule of Contracting States. This is quite useful from COGSA. There we go, you can see that. There's a lot of very detailed information in here. What you've got, the Hague rules in particular, I think, very helpful indeed. You can see the footnoting there and there. You can see the uh, paragraph numbering and subtitles. And the Hague rules, of course, are covered within the Shipping Law Library anyway. Um, I'm just looking to see where, in fact, uh, they are listed. But they certainly are covered as a, um, specific publications within this um, this particular area of publication and as I've said before the uh, Lloyd's Shipping Law Library itself and associated law library publications are of course of great uh, importance. If I can just take one last look at the book, Definition Classification of Bills of Lading. Remember we talked about what is a bill of lading. Th this will give you some idea of what it is because remember the basic rule, you'll know it when you see it. It's rather like seeing your first rattlesnake or your first cobra, you know, when you see it. Now, thank you very much to the authors for producing this work and for Informer, Rout Routledge and Taylor and Francis. We can't do our work without having this sort of publication. So it's a big thank you to all concerned and keep up the good work. The, the Shipping Law Library is particularly important. Remember, we're dealing with a lot of money and it's an international jurisdiction. Thank you. Bye-bye.